Hey gang, welcome back to RC Diesel Channel. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today is part two of the 8.7 liter Iveco rebuild series. Not gonna be anything too technical going on today. We're just gonna tear this engine down, do a little parts inspection and make a list and get parts coming and come up with a plan what we're all gonna do here. You'll catch a glimpse of my oldest son, Jeremy. I'm gonna teach him how to pull liners today. So we'll start off with a, just a quick recap of what we all did in part one, and then we'll just get right into this engine. So let's go, it's over here. Well, I guess we got this Iveco engine out here. This is for a T330 New Holland. And that's what it looks like with the engine out. Let's see if I can move back enough for you to see. It's uh, just a big bunch of openness now. Got lots to clean out down here. That's not a very good design having it closed in like that so much on the bottom, but that's the way they are. Anyway, so this guy all started out with uh, putting coolant into the oil, and uh, so it came down, did drain the fluids, found that there was oil in the coolant as well, which is usually the oil cooler. So that was the next step was to pull the oil cooler. So that's the oil cooler here, and looking inside where the oil flows through, we found all these bits of stuff, plastic and some kind of like soft, foamy media stuff and did a bunch of checking and found out that the oil filter had collapsed and uh, sucked a whole bunch of that stuff through the cooler and so the cooler is all plugged up with with these little pieces inside those cores and there's no way to clean that so we put a new cooler in which is good because these coolers uh, they are known to leak that is a problem on these engines so we got a new cooler in retested it and a pressure tested the cooling system with water in it and that did not fix that problem so then we wound up it is going to be liners or, or something there's something else is wrong here so now we have to strip it down uh, tear into it and find out what we're going to find there so in the meantime just doing some preliminary checking going through a few things and uh, of course we found this cam bearing right there laying in the bottom of the of the head so uh, that cam bearing came from this one in the back here, which is hard to get my phone in there that you can see it You can see the cam lobe there with some funny wear marks So this is uh, gonna turn into a more expensive job We have to tear this down because these bearings in here will have gotten some of the debris from that filter Whatever could pass through the cooler will be going through the bearings and everything else So it just needs a complete tear down now and all the oil galleries have to be gone through blown out cleaned everything else so I'm going to try and do a series on this motor as well. It uh, should be a fun one. Uh, the Iveco is a fairly new engine to me. I have not worked on these very much. So I'll do some learning along with you. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, strip some of the auxiliary stuff off of here. Um, and then uh, we're going to pull the head. It's a rear gear train engine, uh, which is interesting. So we'll uh, have to figure out how... We pull that cam back enough or, or whichever way it is to uh, pull that head off of there. We'll tackle it a step at a time. So here we go. Yeah, I just pulled this clamp off of this corner right here, and this isn't even the right clamp. It's all, it's all mushy and gooey, wrong kind of rubber in there. So this is, I don't know, I don't think they would have put that in there from the factory, not that style of clamp. And I guess that air conditioning mount bracket's cracked there, so I'll have to weld that up.
Well, we're getting along pretty good here. Just about ready to pull the head bolts and pull the head off. Just gonna deal with this cam. And notice we're missing a bolt right there. Uh, I don't know where it is. Haven't seen it yet. It wasn't in the pan. Um, but these things have like little bushings on them or something. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, yeah, this is where that filter thing goes. And that hole looks good. That one's all wallowed out. That one's all wallowed out. So this engine was not assembled correctly or it was assembled correctly, but they were either missing a bolt or it fell out and then it wrecked the rest of this. So now we have to get one of these filter things too. And I'm curious if I'm gonna find that bolt in here or not. So I'm gonna pull the cam gear off and uh, pull that little housing back in between there. And then I should be able to pull the head bolts and lift the head off. All right, camshaft is out. I thought I was taping that, but I guess it wasn't. So uh, the rest of the bearings actually don't look too bad. You can see a little bit of chattering down there on the bottom. A little bit of a wear spot down there. Like that's pretty normal stuff. Nothing too serious going on here. This one looks like it may have had a little bit of degree. You can see debris go through it. You can see a scratch there. That one maybe too. Uh, and of course the the first one is real bad. That's the guy that belongs in there. I don't know. It doesn't look like it actually really spun that much inside there but there is a burr right here so this is where the flange of the cam rides in here and then that spacer plate holds it from walking back and forth um, that spacer plate oh, this is pretty chewed up like you can you well there you go now you can see you can see how much that's chewed up and worn in there so that spacer adapter whatever you call it that's gonna have to get replaced the camshaft itself, the uh, the bearing lobes look real good on most of them. I got this thing pretty dirty here right now, but the number one here, this one here is the one that failed the bearing, and you can see the chattering here, and you can really feel that with your thumb too. Um, I don't think that's going to be repairable. I'm not sure. i have to find that out. Also noticing the lobes have a fair bit of galling on them from that piece sliding out and running through this, I guess. Um, and also this one too. So the, f the uh, number six lobes are in pretty bad shape and you can see a little bit of that chattering on that, uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five, on the sixth bearing uh, as well. So this one can't really feel it, but I take it being that we can see it, it there is wear there. So I am going to guess that cam is toast and that spacer plate. I don't know for sure, but I kind of feel like this will be okay here. But I'm going to need to figure out how I can tell that. I'm going to have to measure it out. Go across or uh, cross it according to the specs and see where we're at. It doesn't look bad. It looks okay. Well, that's good. All right. At this point, we're going to pull the, pull the head. Pull the, pull the head. First, I'm going to pull the bolts out. Then I'm going to pull the head. I got a forklift operator. Should be coming down here pretty soon to give me a hand. And we will uh, get things ready.
Whew, working away on the old Iveco here. You can see that I've washed it all up already. I uh, got it fairly clean. i got a bit more work to do yet. Just finished chasing all the bolt holes, all the pan bolts and the mains and all that stuff. Uh, i got a bit more cleaning to do yet. I need to flush these. Um, i got to flush these ports out, oil ports, for uh, all the contaminants and debris and junk that was inside the oil cooler. I uh, just have to make sure that there's none of that stuff left in any of these oil galleys. This is where your piston squirters go. And uh, so just got to make sure it's perfectly clean because those bearings definitely had stuff go through them. If we look here, these are all the main caps. This is the number one. You can see the scratches in there. It's tough to tell with a camera, but I mean, you can really feel these with your fingers. They're quite deep. Some of them are worse than others. This one's pretty good. Got fairly lucky, but if we look at this one, that one's really stored. This is probably the worst one, had a really big piece of something go scraping through there. So these bearings are, uh, they've definitely had their time. Yeah, that one's pretty scratched up and that one's pretty bad too. This looks like plastic got embedded into their plastic piece. So yeah, I haven't cleaned up the crank yet, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the crank is gonna be okay. Just need to polish it up a little bit, and I think he'll be all right. It shows score marks on there, but for the most part, they kind of just wipe off with the oil. So needs a bit of a polish, but otherwise, I think we're going to be good on the on the crank. Well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Make sure you subscribe and set your notifications to all so you don't miss out on part three, where we start actually putting this engine back together and get into the meat of this project. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.